So to calculate an NDVI image in QGIS, we would use the raster calculator. And to get that, we need the toolbox, which is hiding out in processing. So we go for the toolbox. And then we can just basically, you can either browse all the different tools here, uh, browse all the different options, or we can actually search something. And that's almost always the quickest way to get something. So. So raster calculator, we'll double click it, and it's a bit too big for the screen. So let's make it a bit smaller. So so to calculate the NDVI, the NDVI is the near infrared channel minus the red channel divided by the near infrared plus the red channel. And the near infrared channel is, is band number five. So we start with finding band number five, uh, which is this one. And we sub then subtract the red channel, which is band number four. And we need to put these two things between brackets for the deficient and then a deficient sign, new brackets, and then band number five again for near infrared plus band number four for red. And add another bracket at the end, and this should be it. As you can see, there's already an NDVI option built into it, uh, so we didn't necessarily need to do it, but it's easy enough to just do it ourselves. And by doing it ourselves, we can calculate all kinds of other ratios as well. And let's ignore the cell size because now it's because it's an optional parameter. And uh, if you put it at zero, it will automatically select the best one. Um, we do need to pick this one, the reference layer, which is just one of these layers. So let's just pick our, our infrared band. And it only uses that um, to get to the extent of the size of the layers, the cell size, the uh, coordinate system, to get those parameters. And then we just uh, don't need to worry about it. Um, that should be it. Should just use the same coordinate system as the original one. And then either we can enter a new, make it a new file, or if you leave it empty, it will save it to a temporary file. So you can just see it and then save it if you like it. Or we can enter a file name if, if, we're, if we already know we're going to be happy. So in this case, we'll just use temporary and just run. This works. Okay, it's finished running. So we close it. And now we see, we see this image here. So pale grayscale image. And as you can see, it goes from 1 to minus 1, which makes sense for a ratio. Um, as we see it now, it's a bit uh, it's a bit dull, it's not very high contrasty. So we can stretch it to uh, optimize it. So back to properties, symbology, and in this case, let's just go to the histogram to see what it looks like. To compute the histogram, and now we can see that most of the data is basically in this range of about minus 0.1 to well about 0.4 so you can just manually set the minimum value and the maximum value and if we apply this we'll get a much more contrasty image and now we can can see much more and we can see a very clear uh, distinction when you see deep black you see a very bright white spot here and we see some more gray values in here. And this, our, actually our stretch might be a bit too much because we're losing all the finer detail in here. So you can just go back, properties, and adjust the upper option a bit. Let's set that a bit higher. And now we can suddenly see much more detail in here. See all the roads and all the small scale variation in there. 